The Rams signed an all-pro cornerback, but was it the right signing? That's coming up next here on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Ramley, and welcome to another episode of Locked on Rams, your daily podcast covering your Los Angeles Rams, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Locked on Rams, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We're also available over on YouTube, so if you haven't yet, do us a huge favor and subscribe to Locked on Rams YouTube channel, and also drop your reaction to the Rams signing Tredavious White. Let us know down below. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X at Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. I've been covering LA sports for over a decade. SI 24-7 Sports Dodgers Nation. The Rams 4 locked on. And as always, I'm joined by the Rams pre-half and post-game show host for the Rams flagship radio station, ESPN 710 LA. He just finished his eighth season covering your Los Angeles Rams. The people's champ, Mr. Travis Rogers. You can follow him on X at Travis Rogers. And on today's show, the Rams sign an impact corner. We're going to break Break down the signing of Tredavious White, the cap space they have now, what's next for the Rams. But first, this episode of Locked On Rams is brought to you by Game Time. Down the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. All right, Travis, let's get right into it. Another big signing for the Rams as far as the role he's going to have for this team. It was reported by ESPN's Adam Schefter that the Rams have signed Tredavious White to a one year deal worth a base of eight and a half million and a max of 10 million. The mm-hmm. team, of course, needed to address that cornerback spot. You did it with Darius Williams. You have Tredavious White. You got two impact outside cornerbacks. And really, the only downside of this is he has dealt with some serious injuries yeah. over the last couple of seasons. But before that, a top five cornerback, a high risk move, but also a high reward, too. Look, th- this is get ready every day or you know what's coming, right? You know what I'm going to say. This is Aaron Donald related. The, 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 this is Aaron Donald related that the pressure that's going to be able to deliver on the opposing quarterback by the Rams is going to be way different than it has been for the last 10 years. And by different, I mean worse. And by by it's just not going to be as consistent that everybody that was getting single teamed before is now going to be single or doubled almost every single time. That Aaron Donald took so much off of everyone else's plate that you didn't have to cover for a very long time. And that if you were a player, you know, t- take your pick, whether it was Michael Brockers and Dominic and Sue, a- any of the other people that have been opposite of Aaron Donald, Kobe Turner, uh, Byron Young, any of these guys, Leonard Floyd, Von Miller, any of them, right? They were going to be able to go do what they needed to do. The quarterback was under tremendous pressure by the time he stepped up to the line of scrimmage. And now that won't be true or nearly as true, which means your corners need to be better, right? This is why Darius Williams is back. This is why Tredavious White is here because you're going to need guys that are better in coverage longer and White certainly checks that box. If he's healthy, this is a great signing. If he's able to play at the the, the best version of Tredavious White, that's really good news. Same thing for Darius Williams. But like most things, they're going to run through this Rams defense over the next you know months, if not longer than that. This is Aaron Donald related. And I think that if he stays healthy is 100% true, but also it's how is he going to respond to that Achilles injury? How mm-hmm. quickly will he look like the guy that was a pro bowler, someone that was a top three cornerback really in this league? So the high upside is there. We know the Rams like going that route, but he missed six games in 2021, 11 games in 2022, 13 games in 2023. Now, of course, Dr. Neil Elitrotz, the Dodger, the Rams and Dodgers also, a team Everybody. doctor, <laughs> really, I know he's the top guy in the game. He yeah. performed the surgery so you feel good about that but look this is a one-year deal if it works out great they need it to work out absolutely for this team to have success for sure but if it doesn't worst case scenario you lose eight and a half million dollars it's not the worst thing in the world i think it was worth the gamble is less sneak gonna roll snake guys hopefully he doesn't but if he hits on this you have yourself a top level cornerback on a pretty cheap deal because he was injured because he's coming back from that. So for me, it's how quickly does he return to form coming off that? And I look at the cornerback position now, 
You don't have those young guys, the Darian Kendrick. We'll see what happens with Kobe Durant, the role he has next season. Now you have two guys that are veteran proven quarterbacks in this league, where if they play to their skill level, to their ability, you got two guys you can trust at the position. Well, there are a couple of things here, right? No, number one, I, I, I think you're right. The risk for this is pretty low. This is a one-time or a one-year deal, I should say. And if it hits, great. And you got an opportunity to go win some games. You got yourself a really good player. And if it doesn't, oh, well, you're out from underneath it in a single year and you can go look for the next guy. I think there's going to be a lot of that. Number two for me is this singles, I, I think to me, that they're in that win now mode that they've been in for such a long time, that this is not a, a this is a veteran player. This is a veteran player who has a, a lot of upside. We've seen him when he's healthy, how good he is. But like you just mentioned, that's three years in a row where he's missed not only significant time, but a ton of time along the way. This is a, he needs to be good. He needs to be good right away. This is not a long-term play. I think the Rams realize they're in that window again. You know, we, we've said it for so long, the window is Aaron Donald. Well, he's gone. So I, I think you've moved to a different window in a different part of the house, right? If the window was the Aaron Donald window, now it's the Matthew Stafford, you know, Kyron Williams, Sean McVay, uh, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup window, that you're going you're gonna to crawl through that offensive window, not the defensive one. Um, but a, again, this is a, this is a short term play that I think speaks to the Rams belief that they are close to being one of the better teams in the NFC and they're shooting their shot. And, and, and I like it. Look, th this could be one of those. He never even gets on the field or when he does, it doesn't look good. That's that's definitely on the table. But I like it for the simple fact that it kind of indicates to me that they think they're close, which makes me happy. Oh, I really like this move. I like this signing. Of course, you could have spread the wealth a little there and you could sign multiple players with that kind of money possibly, but I like the upside play. I think you bear, you bank and you bet on the player and what he's done the past and hope that he gets back to being that guy. But to your point, this absolutely screams win now, right? Yeah. I mean, you look at the contract, eight and a half million, and that's before it could get up to $10 million. That leaves the Rams with around $8.2 million in cap space. That would put them around 24th in effective cap space in the league with the third most roster spots to be filled. So they're clearly telling you that, hey, we care about these top 51 contracts, right? We care about these top guys on this team. We want to fill that with those positions. So I love it. Look, I mean, you look at the offensive side and who they could add. And this really kind of shows what they could do in the draft. You're probably gonna see wide receiver edge, left tackle, and now cornerback, which maybe if the best cornerback value-wise is available, they might still take it. They like his talent level. But I think you also add some clarity to their draft position. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. I, I think that this is, you know, the, the more you see what they're doing right now, the less I think they move and the more I think they probably actually pick in that number 19 spot just because of the, the financial ramifications that you're talking about right there. Um, but again, I, I, my draft philosophy doesn't change a whole bunch. I, I think that you still go through it. Who's the best player on your board? Take that player when he's available, unless it's a quarterback. That's the only caveat I have there. But if it's edge, if it's corner, if it's O-line, whatever it is, if that guy's at the top of your board and it comes around to 19 or the guy that's at the top of your board is around, you know, in the mid-teens and you want to move up and go grab him, I don't dislike that either. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't think this changes your draft philosophy a ton. Yeah, at the end of the day, Darian Kendrick and Akella Witherspoon, I would say greater than sign heads towards Darius Williams and Tredavious White, if all things are equal. But coming up next, we're going to take a look at the Rams secondary after the signing and some more takeaways from the Rams signing of Tredavious White. That's coming up next here on Locked on Rams. Say goodbye to you busted brackets, right? Adios, busted brackets, because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Here we are getting ready to roll out the sweet 16, right? So whether you're betting on another big upset or you like the chalk, you like the number one seeds, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers, you get 200 bucks in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks back to use on point spreads, 200 bucks back to use on money lines. You can even pick who's going to win the whole darn thing. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. And, oh, by the way, on FanDuel, 
some future win totals are available for you right there. So go check out what you see. Maybe you like the Rams over. Maybe you're thinking, oh, they're going to have a struggle to get there right now. But that's out on FanDuel as well. But you got to go. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Go do it right now. And welcome back to Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And also a special shout out to our every listeners out there watching and listening to every single episode. And you guys are going to want to be prepared for this draft coming up. One of the most important drafts in Rams history, another big draft. Okay. So you definitely want to follow the channel, subscribe and join that. Every listeners club membership is a 100% free and you won't miss a thing about your Los Angeles Rams. Now, Travis here in our second segment, a couple more takeaways from this signing. We mentioned his name a few minutes ago, and that is that Akella Witherspoon, he's most likely not going to be back, right? I yeah. mean, these are two outside cornerbacks. He's primarily on the outside. So that really screams that as well. Yeah, you know, th- this felt like this was how this was going to wind up anyway, that when we got into the offseason and you started seeing the Rams take care of, of some of the players that were already here, right? They go and they take care of Kevin Dotson. They go and they make a move for Darius Williams and these sorts of things. And Witherspoon was always one of those, yeah, we like him. We're going to see what we can do. They never really made that step toward him in a meaningful way that led you to believe that this was going to happen for sure. Uh, he did a good job for the Rams, right? I, I, I think that, you know, th- this is a player that's bounced around a little bit. I think this is just kind of his lot in the NFL, that he's a good player, but not a guy that anybody really wants to sink their teeth into long term. Uh, he'll land somewhere else. I bet he starts somewhere else. But I think that his days as a Los Angeles Ram are probably numbered because when you've got a Tredavious White, you've got a Darius Williams, and you do have some younger guys that maybe you're still trying to develop, and a lot of these players are are redundant, that not a ton of them are going to play inside, like you mentioned, that Witherspoon's probably the odd man out. For sure. I mean, that's just... That's the case now. And look, I mean, he did great at a bargain price. They yeah. love the idea of bringing him back unless they weren't able to upgrade that position. They were able to do that in this case. Another big takeaway is, look, you're starting to see this Rams team. You're pretty much going traditional with the cornerback roles. You're not seeing the flexibility that you saw with Jalen Ramsey, where you could play him in the slot, play him on the outside. These are pretty much guys that are set in stone where they're at here on the outside. Yeah, th- th- this is one of the things that I think is going to get really interesting, that one of the things that the Rams had done uh, over the years is they did have some optionality on guys that could play in and out. And now it seems like you've got some guys that do a thing as opposed to some guys that do multiple things. Now, the draft is coming like we've talked about. The free agency, you know, there's still some moves that you can make. There's always trades. There's always guys that get cut in camp that become available to go a, a, and, and maybe pick up if that's an area of need for you right there. So I don't think that this is, you know, the the, the cement is completely dry on what they're going to do out there. But I think for now, and again, one of the things that I really like about the Rams is that they do use the trade market. They are pretty aggressive in, in that world where not a lot of NFL teams are. So if they think that that's something that's preventing them from going to where they want to go and we're in week you know, four or five of the NFL season and all of a sudden it's like, wait, they got who? That's something they've done before. A lot of teams don't really use it like that. The Rams have. And again, that's just another off ramp on the freeway that if something's not working, we can try to address it on the fly. Absolutely. And really one of my biggest takeaways from this signing, Travis, ball skills, ball skills, and yeah. ball skills. I mean, the Rams, they had 10 interceptions last season. That was the ninth fewest in the NFL. Just four of those were by cornerbacks and yeah. three of them were at Kello Witherspoon. Right. Okay. With white, he has 18 career interceptions in just 82 games. He had a league high six interceptions in 2019 when he was a first team all pro. So this is someone who's basically like a receiver out there. Well, they think about like when you were talking about the number of interceptions that the Rams had every time the Rams would intercept a pass last year, it was almost a show like, Whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa. wow. We, 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 it was get off the field with a punt, maybe stop somebody on fourth down that the, the takeaways were not something uh, of a strength for the Rams. So maybe that uh, white brings a little bit more of that along the way. But again, this all comes back to him being available, healthy and ready to go, getting back to that top level of, of, of ability that he has. If, if he's look, maybe he doesn't get back to 10 out of 10, like he was, but if he can get back to eight out of 10, that's probably still the best guy that the Rams have at that position on the roster. That could still be a very big upgrade. 
Yeah, I mean, he had four last year. He had a pick six. So, I mean, Chris Shula definitely is going to lean on these cornerbacks for sure. But I agree with you. I mean, when they got an interception last year, it was like, it was almost like see Whoa. watching them pass the ball in the black and white leather helmet days. It was like that <laughs> shocking, right? And I agree with you. I mean, I want to see some interceptions, that exciting part of the game once again. So the other big takeaway too, Rams are, they're going with the vets, right? They're going with the yeah. big boys. And I think that, they are starting to, I don't want to say lose hope or lose confidence in some of these young guys, but I don't think they're allowing them to time to develop, right? As a lot, at least time for them. It's just the timeline for the Darian Kench and the Kobe Durant's right now aren't really in line with their winning in their winning window. Well, it's funny, right? Think about the other teams that we have here, you know, the, the big teams that we have here in Los Angeles, that the Lakers, they're never in development mode. Never, right? They, they, they're always trying to find the guy that's going to bring them the next championship. LeBron into AD. AD is going to roll into another big-time player who's coming in. The Dodgers have been competing for a World Series year in and year out for the last decade or so. That e Even a team in baseball, you almost always have to, to kind of take a couple of steps back at some point. They really haven't done it. I think the Rams are kind of falling into that same you know category of – you know, a, a, a air quote rebuild or a step back, it's really short term. It was last year and it wasn't that bad. And they're always trying to reload uh, the, the talent pipeline. This is not a, hey, look, we're going to take some time. You're always going to be a free agent destination. You've got an owner with very deep pockets. You've got a destination city that people want to play in. You've got one of the best coaches in the league. You've got one of the best quarterbacks in the league. You can't really wait around and say, hey, let's, let, let's wait a couple of years to see if these guys are good or not. You either show up good or be, you know, my, my high school baseball coach used to say this, be good or be gone. And that's kind of what the, they, they have right now with the Rams. Like you need to show up and play or we're going to go find someone else who will. For sure. There's no doubt about that. All traces back to Matthew Stafford too, for it me. Sure I mean, all this comes back to, we have a Super Bowl winning quarterback that his time is ticking on his prime and his ability to win a Super Bowl. But coming up here in our final segment, we're going to take a look at the Rams secondary after this signing that's coming up next here on Locked on Rams. So when you're ordering tickets for your next big game, you're right. Like, okay, we're going to go see the Dodgers or the Kings or the Lakers or the Angels or whatever it is. And you're thinking, you know what? Oh, man, I should order the tickets. I should order the tickets. You don't have to sweat it anymore because you have the Game Time app on your phone, right? Killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, best price guarantee. Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying your tickets, right? And it's not just sporting events, which we all like. It's a, it's a concert. It's comedy. It's theater events. Basically, anything near you. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Of course, you're going to get that view from where that seat's going to be. You're going to feel great great about it as well and it's easy right you get to buy the tickets in seconds with just a couple of taps on that game time app exclusive deals on uh to right up to the start of the event even an hour after it starts it is the place to find last minute tickets so if you're a procrastinator like me Game Time is going to help you out on that as well so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app Create an account. Use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account and redeem the code Locked On L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And we are off and running here on Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday. Free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And also a reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Okay, so Travis, now looking at this secondary, it definitely looks revamped. It definitely gives you more confidence. The talent level has been upgraded. You have more experience. And really, I think the top dog is Darius Williams, cornerback Darius Williams. I mean, he was released by the Jaguars, the Rams. They jumped back in. They brought him back to L.A. on a three-year deal, $30 million. And, yeah, that could be seen as a lot of dough for a 31-year-old quarterback. But the Rams, they know what they're getting at him. They yep. know that he was a high-level guy that played the position 
really on a fantastic level from 2019 to 2021. So like him back. And you got Tredavious White. We talked about him. Then Nickel Corner, you got Quentin Lake or Kobe Durant. Quentin Lake, though, UCLA Bruin, I think he definitely has sewn up that position, the physicality, the toughness. He was impressive last season. Yep. Safety, Cameron Curl. I love him. I think he's someone that could be looked at as a steal. You can see him deep. You can see him in the slot. You can see him in the box. So I like this team. And then you also got Russ Yeast. Well, so I, I think it's interesting. You have basically two ways to to play defense, right? Two ways to do both of these things, offense and defense, I guess. It's basically, do you want to flood it with a ton of talent? Or do you want to try to cover for maybe a lack of talent with an incredible scheme, right? Well, th think about what the Rams have right now. They've got a brand new DC in Chris Shula. So I, I don't know what the scheme is going to be. I don't know if he's the second coming of Buddy Ryan and all of a sudden it's going to be, oh my gosh, this is the greatest thing we've ever seen. Or whether this is going to be a, you know, a, a typical NFL defensive coordinator that needs really good players to execute what it is that they're doing. I like hedging my bets with more talent. I like hedging the bets with better players that I know play well in this league. That's Darius Williams. That's Curl. That's Tredavious White. These are guys that have been around the block. You know, like Kobe Turner coming off a nice year. Byron Young coming off of a nice year. Ernest Jones has been around the block a few times along the way. So you've got some guys that have played in this league, that have had success in this league, that let's raise the, the floor of the talent a little bit higher. I have no idea what the ceiling's going to be. We'll see what the scheme looks like. We'll see what the, the leadership looks like and all of those things. But at least the floor, talent-wise, has been pulled up a little bit with guys like White and Williams. I, I think that's a very big deal, especially especially when you got the twofold of Donald leaving and a DC coming in or not even coming in, but being promoted to a level where he's never had to do that before, you know, it, until you've done it. I don't know. I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic. If Sean McVay likes it, I love it, but we'll see, right. We, in, until you've had that job, you just never really know. But I, I do like that. They've lifted the talent level across the board. And to your point, DMAC specifically in the secondary. Yeah, no, I think that's the name we're going to be talking about a lot. It's Chris Shula. And Chris Shula, sure. you do not want to see your name trending. And I feel bad no. for a guy that has to have his first DC stint the year after Aaron Donald retires. He didn't get that. But what he did get, like you mentioned, was a secondary that has been upgraded from a talent perspective. Yes. And I think that the way that they could perform for him, it could make his life a lot easier. So Ernest Jones back and then kind of behind those starters, you got Trey Tomlinson. We'll see if he can take a leave. Still have Darian Kendrick, Sean Jolly, Cameron McCunchy, Jason Taylor, second Tanner Ingles. So yeah, those young guys, they're stockpiled behind these veterans, but Look, this is a improved unit. That was a big priority this offseason. They absolutely addressed it, and I think they did with flying colors. I like the higher upside guys with a higher risk. Yeah. I like the fact that the Rams go that route because, look, that's the risk you take. And uh, organizations that take risks, right, F uh, fortune favors the bold, that definitely is the MO for Les Snead. We're seeing that on display here once again. That's why they won the Super Bowl. Yeah. They, 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 they took a big swing, and it hit. Right. They, they took a big swing at quarterback and it hit. They took another big swing at going to get Von Miller and it hit. They took a big swing and bringing in Odell Beckham Jr. when a lot of people thought he was washed and done and a lunatic and it hit. Right. You, you're going to have to take some big swings at these things. And look, let, let, let's kind of leave this on, on, I think, a positive note, which is the Rams are going to win or lose games based on the fact whether or not they can score a bunch of points. This is they're, they're not winning games. Seven. If they have to play 17 to 14 games, they're cooked. That's not going to happen. If they can play some 34 to 31, some 31 to 28s. They can win those games. So th this team is going to be led by its offense. You've got an offensive head coach. You've got an elite quarterback. You've got tons of skill players uh, on that side of the ball. The defense just needs to be good enough. And I think they're starting to put some blocks in places that it can be. Absolutely. Like Babe Ruth said, I swing big. I swing with everything I got. I hit big or I miss big. That's what the Rams are doing. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Rams. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And as always, you can follow the people's champ, Mr. Travis Rogers at Travis Rogers. And until next time, whose house? It's Locked On Rams house.